and welcome to episode two of Flo Rides Playlist. And today we're talking about a good friend, Mike Flores from Van uh, Steel City. He's the guitar player. And Mike, um, today, today we're talking about some of your all-time favorite Boston tunes. Um, so let's get right into it. And um, you, you have a, a, a list of ten songs on your um, playlist to, uh, this month. So um, let's start off at number ten. Uh, what's your song? Oh, hey, thanks for letting me do this again. I really appreciate of it. Of course. It's super fun. Uh, song number ten is "Higher Power," man, um, and that's the song, of course, that we, you know, uh, that ha it features Brad Delp on vocals. I think it's from the Greatest Hits album, and uh, man, it, it's I just love the song because there's so much diversity to it. Um, like most Boston songs, it's extremely well written. Yeah, the engineering, the engineering is fantastic. Uh, the, the arrangement is great, and it's just it has so many cool aspects to it that you just you really just I fell in love with the song when I heard it. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, and what I was gonna so, say is, if you look at that, uh, if you look at the, um, you know, the song list on, on that greatest hit CD, I mean, I, I mean, that pretty much is a Boston uh, set list, and you know, it's all the greatest songs uh, from the band's catalog. If you go to, if I went to a Boston concert, those are the tunes I want to hear, and then you get this new tune, Higher Power, you're like, wow, they got this great new tune on top of it. You know, um, when, when I go buy a CD like that, I'm like, you know. Man, I, I feel like I'm getting my money's worth. Oh, yeah. You know, I, strangely, Boston's probably, you mentioned they're, you know, probably sounding like a set list looking at greatest hits. Yeah. Strangely, Boston's a band that I've never had the pleasure of seeing live. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's somewhat of a regret for me, but, it, you know, it, it kind of, it's one of those things, man. I never got to see Queen with Freddie. Yeah. Never really got to see Boston, so. Yeah, and, uh, and I... Uh, still, Still enjoy their music. Yeah, and I, I guess um, before we go any further, um, tell the story. Um, tell us how you first um, became a Boston fan. Well, you know, I mean, uh, we're all like kids growing up in the seventies, and uh, one of the things that I remember most about Boston is just really being able to go on road trips with my mom. Um, we moved from Ohio to Florida in earlier earlier in the seventies, and we'd go on like little road trips here and there throughout the state. You know, whenever mom had a weekend off. And, you'd hear Boston on the radio and it was just a band that, you know, just kind of grabbed you. Like they just reached in and clutched at you. And there was so much magic to their music that it's just things that you remember as a kid growing up, man. Yeah. You know, and it, it brings yeah. back great memories. Yeah. And like, like I told you, um, I kind of have the same story in that, um, you know, growing up in the seventies and eighties, um, Boston was one of those bands, especially talking about the debut album, you know, those first two albums, um, were all over, you know, radio back in the seventies and eighties. And um, then they didn't have a new album until like 1986. And um, first thing I heard off that was Amanda, like a lot of people. And you're hearing this uh, kind of power ballad from Boston all over the radio. And so, you know, of course you're hearing it. And then I went and got the full album. And I actually liked the rest of the album, but I wasn't such a big fan of Amanda. I thought, you know, maybe this is Boston's attempt at kind of um, having a hit with a power ballad, which I thought, you know, the rest album just was really rocking, though. And, uh, you know, well, like I said, you know, like we talked about a little bit before uh, hitting the record button. Yeah. Uh, Amanda's not even on my list. Yeah, yeah, uh, I yeah. Do think, I do think, like, those uh, the bell sounds that Tom Schultz makes with his guitars on that, yeah. that song are great. I also think it's a good song, but it's not even my favorite song or my favorite ballad on that album. I totally so, agree, yeah. there's that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, looking at number nine, Number nine is kind of like, I guess, if you, I don't really want to call it an oddball, yeah. but it, it's kind of the oddball of the of the playlist because it's I Need Your Love, and that's the only song that's actually not sung by Brad Delp. Yeah. So that's, uh, you know, and it, again, it's, it's another one of these things where it seems like, you know, Boston was really kind of leaning towards those power ballads on their releases yeah. and it's a but I, I just thought it was a great song and uh man it's just you know the new guy as he was you know in 1994 uh, you know when he came on to walk on uh Fran cosmo um he just you know he did a great job with that too man yeah and yeah I just and I, i'm glad you included that song i need your love on this list because i gotta tell you um of the newer boston releases you know um that is probably my favorite song you know i gotta say i need your love i've just had such a reaction from the very first time i heard that song i still occasionally will go on youtube and and play it you know just listen to it because it just kind of even for a power ballad it kind of really rocks my world and I, I don't know what it is about that song but i um i do like it a lot better than amanda i thought you know man that's that's the song 
yeah, I think that you know if this song was on on third stage, I think they probably. I yeah. mean, I know third stage would platinum. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think if this song was on third stage, the song probably would have carried them a lot farther. Uh, just a better tune. Yeah, and I so think I too. I think too. I need your love. Um, really deserves to have some love too, because like you said, um, you know they they um, did not have the legendary Brad Delp in the band any longer at that point, and um, you know for for that to be all over radio and people to be reacting to that song like that 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 says about something about that singer's talent. You know that the people are so accepting of that song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, all right, um, looking in at number eight, you know uh, we've got the it's easy. Yeah, which I yeah. think is just an amazing song off "Don't Look Back." Uh, there's you look you look at the you know you look at the lyrics, and that's one thing about Boston. You know whether it's a song about partying, you know, uh, you know, like a, you know it's a party or smoking or whatever. Yeah. You look at these songs, and you know, it doesn't matter what it is; it's just well written, and it almost seems inspiring. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter what they write about, and this is another one of those songs that just is amazing. You know, it's easy taking it day by day. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's it's easy. I'm glad you included that because um, that that's um, one of those tunes that people might kind of forget about. You know, it, it's on um, "Don't Look Back," like you said. But um, I bet, like, if you haven't heard that tune in years, you, you put that on, and it's like list, almost listening yeah. to a brand new tune, and you're like, you know, man, this came out in 1978, but it's just as good as um, hearing it for the first time. You know. Well, you know, the one thing that I like about Boston Records is, you know, it's something that I think a lot of the modern bands get away from. And you listen to a Boston record, and there's variety yeah. in, in a Boston record. You know, you've got, you know, there's some of these songs, I mean, you know, uh, and we'll get to it to, in the next in the next song, it, they, they're just, they're different. You know, when you look at, well, might as well hop in at number seven. You look at a song like Smokin', you know, we did a playlist on Fog Hat. Yeah, yeah. Here's a song that here's a song that probably could have ended up on a fog hat record. Oh no doubt, you know? yeah. There's these like these songs are all you know. There, there's variety to it. You, the, the newer bands, a lot of them, you listen to them, you're like, it's a great song. The playing's spectacular. The guitar playing's crisp. The production's awesome. And then they you click to say the next track on that CD. Yeah. It kind of sounds like the last one you just listened to. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That's, and that's like one of my biggest disappointments sometimes when I listen to music is I'm looking for that variety on an album. And when you listen to a Boston album, you have it. And, you know, coming up, like I said, we're talking about number seven and smoking now. And I just love like all that Hammond B3 in the middle of it. it this is a song, you know, there's a couple of songs in this that I'd, I'd love to perform live. This is one of them. And I think it's because we also have a killer keyboard player in Steel City that would just nail this. Um, but uh, it's just, it's got such a cool vibe, you know, it's got that, you know, it's got that bluesy, you know, ballsy vibe to it. I just, the yeah. song just gets under your skin. Yeah, and I think smoking, you know, it's kind of like a hard rock tune. Uh, you know, it's, it's a little harder for uh, of a tune for, than what Boston typically does, but, um, you know, right. maybe we're supposed to get off on the guitar riff. But um, one thing I noticed about that tune, as you said, and a lot of the Boston tunes is... Um, not only heavy on the guitar, but like you know the riffing and stuff. But I'm um, heavy on the keyboards, and that's something yeah. I like. That's something I like. I mean, I, I will say Boston is right up there with like a band like Deep Purple as far as being a band that can really incorporate the keyboards in, in a rock band. You know, a lot of times people tell mm -hmm. you keyboards suck; they don't belong in rock music. I don't agree with that. I mean, I mean, we're talking about Boston that night. You look like what Boston did, or you even look at like John Lord and what he did in Deep Purple. I mean, nobody played keyboards like that. Well, you know, and that's the thing. A lot of people don't think the keyboards, uh, or people think that keyboards don't belong in music. Yeah. And there might have been a point in time where I was one of those people. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but it's strangely so, because Boston's one of my favorite bands. Europe is one of my favorite bands. Yeah, yeah. Winger. All these bands. It, 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 and I think that was the thing that just kind of made me realize, you know what? There's more keyboards in this music than I actually in the music that I like that yeah. I actually realized and maybe just maybe I should start incorporating it more into my own and you know so you can thank bands like Boston and thank bands like Winger and thank bands like Europe Deep Purple all the bands that you mentioned for kind of bringing that into Steel City's own music and you know when, when I read the reviews even for Steel City not to make it about us yeah, yeah. but I, I kind of see you know where it's like it, we really got greater reviews even on Mach 2 than we did yeah. on the prior record and it's because we incorporated a lot more keyboards and people loved it 
I mean, even there's a place, even you look at place for keys. yeah, you even look at bands like you know Kiss and Ozzy in their live show. They use keyboard players, but but a lot of times they'll put the keyboard player like behind the stage and yeah. And I, I never really understood stage. that. Yeah, and they sneak they sneak them in there on on the album too. It just yeah, it's yeah. kind of underlying. It's just there for a little bit of you know it gives gives the song a little bit of breathing room and yeah, yeah. Uh, gives it a little bit more depth. But you know they they kind of hide it a little bit more. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean. So I mean, the music itself is for the most part still guitar oriented, though. Oh so, yeah, yeah. There. And uh, so you know, moving up to number six, I guess uh, we're looking at something about you, which again, it's off the first album, I know. And there's a whole lot of this list that's off the first album, and I apologize no, for no. that. But we could have put the whole album on there yeah. and been total, and that could that could have been the Boston playlist, and I'd have been totally cool with it. But. <laughs> I mean, it's just, a, it's another one of those songs, I think it kind of starts off in a, yeah. in a vibe that you think it's going to go in one direction, and then boom, now, now, takes now, to yeah. another. Now I was going to say, you know, I'm talking about the debut album, probably um, something about you is probably even the uh, um, second most um, played song off that album, the first being probably more of a feeling, which we're going to get to um, eventually. Well, I mean, I never really, I didn't pay attention to that when I was looking at this list. Well, it seemed, it so seemed I, like to me, at least... Um, Anytime I hear people like playing songs like the, off the first album, a lot of times it'd be those those two um, songs, or maybe that's just kind of been my experience. I don't know. <laughs> that's that's something about you yeah, has a hell of a chorus, man. That's yeah. just a great tune. Yeah, and, yeah. And I just I love the harmonization of that song. Wow, it's just man. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. These guys, so, they they sure knew how to write a song. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's when you take. You know, between uh, you know, don't look back and third stage, you take eight years to write a song. You should be able to come up with something cool. I mean, that's the thing. And, I mean, everything I've ever read on Boston, especially Tom Schultz, who's like the mastermind behind Boston. I mean, this guy is much more than a songwriter. He's much more than a guitar player. I mean, he was a scientist. I mean, his he's an inventor. His music was yeah. like um, he, he like brought science and music together. Um, for example, I'm sure you you know. Um, he invented this thing called the Rockman, which is like a, a miniature Walkman that you know you can kind of plug your guitar into. And um, or, I'm not yep. sure exactly what it is, but 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 just amazing. I mean, the guy is it's, intelligent. That's what pa- yeah. it's what powers the Boston sound. I actually have one. I don't play it anymore, but okay. I do have one. Wow. And uh, yeah, those things are great. If you want Tom Scholl's tone, yeah, you need one. <laughs> you definitely need one. I mean, I, did, I could be wrong. I mean, I, but. Didn't he go to MIT? I, I believe so, yeah. I mean, um, like I said, <laughs> I've read a ton of stuff. A very intelligent guy. That's why I'm saying he's much more than just a musician. He he went to school, like you said. He studied a lot of this stuff. And, and, and see, that's the other thing about Boston. As great as their music is, as great of the catalogs they have, but one thing I think about Boston is there one band that really had an identity crisis in the sense that um, I think, you know, maybe outside of uh, maybe Brad Delp, Tom Scholz, those are kind of only two two, two band members I can name. Um, and like you said, um, you know, after the third album, they start taking eight years between albums. Um, yeah. That's the only thing, you know, we, we know their music, but um, you don't know a whole lot about the band personally. <laughs> yeah, they, you know, the only guy I can name right off the top of my head right now is probably uh, Barry Goudreau, which was yeah. the guitar player. Yeah, there you go, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, and they've had they've had some really cool people that kind of have graced graced the stage. Michael Sweet sang with Boston. Yeah, that's for a a, while. that's what I was gonna say. I, I I was I was wishing that he would have at least done one album with them. But um, it would have been cool. It would have been cool. Yeah, been nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I would have loved to have heard Michael Sweet on a Boston album just to see what that sounds like. But then again, you know, I yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. I I, I could count on one hand how many times I've listened to Corporate America. So I mean, yeah. Um, and I. Really, like I said, it's really you know the later Boston albums. I kind of focused on the earlier ones here, and I apologize for that. But these were the ones that really just kind of stuck. Well, you know, the, the playlist is um, you know the songs that influenced you, um, and, and I will kind of agree. I mean, I, I like everything Boston's kind of put out, and I'll agree. Probably, Corporate America is probably my least favorite, and I think part of a reason for that it had some good tunes on there. But I think maybe maybe Tom Scholz it seemed like was trying to um, you know be more modern a uh, rock band. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. So, I don't know about you, yeah. but looking at number looking at number five, uh, "Cool the Engines" is probably my favorite song off Third Stage. Yeah, yeah, that's um, that one for me too. That um, when I first got Third Stage, I mean, that's um, one of the first tunes that really kind of rocked my world. Um, even to this day, I love that tune. Um, 
you know, I, I have to give an honorable mention too to, um, I think I like it. Can't you say you believe in me? Um, really, oh, those are great, great, great tunes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, totally. I like, I think, I think I like it. And especially can't you say, I mean, what I love about, um, those two tunes is, um, they're kind of a combination of like really a rock and tune and they have really uh, slow parts and then they really rock, you know, you know, yeah. major kick in the ass. Like, can't you say it starts off real slow and then just, oh, yeah. yeah, all that, all yeah. that piano and yeah, all that yeah. other cool stuff. Yeah. No, it, it, like I said, that just comes back to, you know, that comes back to arrangements yeah. and songwriting. Yeah. And that's the one thing that I, you know, if, if, um, you know, there's a lot of guitar players out there that like to be called, you know, like, oh man, man, that guy could riff, that guy is yeah, yeah. a shredder. And to me, it's like, I'd rather, you know, and it's cool when people say that, you know, they oh dude, you could play or whatever. And I don't think I can, I think I'm okay, but... Ooh. I love it when people come up to me and they, and they say something like, dude, you write songs like Boston writes songs. Mm -hmm. And there was actually a fellow that told me one time that for him, and this was the biggest compliment I think anybody's ever paid me mm -hmm. as a songwriter, other than David B. Hope from Apocaly Apocalyptic Lovers telling me that he sounded like Journey on steroids. Yeah, yeah. I, I laughed when he said it. Someone told me that they felt that our, you know, for them, and I'm not saying that yeah. these albums are as good, but yeah. for them, they felt that our first two albums were on par with like the first two Boston albums. It's, that's how they, that's how our music made them feel. Yeah. To me, yeah. that was probably that was probably as a musician one of the most humbling moments of my life. Now I let mean, me seriously. Yeah. Let me ask you when you're told that, like, um, were you aware of this? Like, did you think it sounded like Boston, or after you're told this, you kind of listen to this stuff now? And, you know, yeah, they're right. <laughs> Well, I think there's, you know, there's definitely some Boston influence on, on these, uh, you know, on the songs, yeah, you know, and, yeah. and, and, and that's undeniable. But I think what this person meant was he felt for him, it didn't, wasn't necessarily that they sounded like Boston, yeah. but he felt for him, they were important releases to the point where he, you know, yeah. they, they felt like that, like the, like the Boston albums made him feel. And I was like, dude, I, it's seriously, I mean, yeah. it's like, that was, like I said, the most the most humbling moment as a musician I think I've ever felt was for someone to say something like that because those two Boston albums are untouchable. They are gold. Yeah, and I, I almost yeah. I almost feel uncomfortable saying something like that here. I mean, well, really well you, you shouldn't because you know um, I think you know maybe as a musician when you go in and record the song these songs you know on your albums. Um, Maybe you wrote it about a specific, uh, you know, thing or a specific topic, and um, you're not even aware that your influ your musical influence is coming out through your own music. And I, I think that's the yeah. most kind of um, honest um, approach to record to creating music. You know, when you do because um, everybody's got their influences, and, and and you're not going in there with the uh, with the plan to I'm gonna I'm gonna be a Boston oh, clone yeah. band, but but your influence just honestly they come out, you know, of stuff that you grew up on. Yeah, yeah. There ain't nothing you can do about that, man. I mean, every every everybody, you know, every band kind of um, deals with that. I mean, even a band like um, you take a band like um, Creedence Clearwater, great uh, classic rock band. I mean, they got sued um, by Little Richard's record label for. Um, one of their songs sounded too much like Little Richard, and it's I guess it's just like the same three chord pattern, you know. I think it was trapped for the song Traveling Band, and um, not even trying to do like a Little Richard cover, but just they playing the same chords, and it comes out sounding sounding exactly like Little Richard, who who, who incidentally yeah. influenced them, you know. <laughs> just strange thing. Yeah. yeah That's so, crazy. Yeah. Um, all right, so looking at number four, uh, how do you feel about that song? Peace, Peace of Mind, I got to tell you, um, I that's got to be all, my all-time favorite Boston tune. Um, I mean, that's wow. that's one of these tunes that to this day you, you hear all over the radio. And um, I don't know, um, I love the Boston version, but I tell you, another thing, talk about Michael Sweet. Um, mm -hmm. When he yeah, went back I to Striper, when he went, I don't know if you know this, when he went back to Striper... Um, they did a version of this song, um, you know, obviously with Michael singing it, and I just love the way he sings it too. I mean, he it almost sings oh, yeah. it dead on, but yeah. um, great version of that. And and I think um, I, I don't know what it is, but 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 that song, I, I think it's because I've heard it so much on the um, radio. But but I love it just a little more than um, you know, more than a feeling. That's a great song too. Don't get me wrong, but um, I, I don't know. I just love the way this kind of. Um, kicks in you know kicks in the beginning of the song 
Oh yeah. Yeah. And like I said, it, it's it, you know that little acoustic piece, you know. And then it kind of kicks in real, real like, major. Oh, yeah. Kick, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Fantastic stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think everybody, you know, pretty much the the top three, I, they might not be any order. I think that most yeah. people would kind of have them. Yeah. But um, I think the top three might end up being most people's top three. Yeah. I yeah. Could yeah. Be wrong. yeah, yeah. But uh, don't look back is number three for me. Yeah. yeah. And, it's one of those songs, it's like the second you hear it, you hear that opening guitar riff, yeah. and you're like, wow, wow, here it comes. It, you know, it, this is one of the only times that Boston didn't take eight million years to make another to make another album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, it was, what, two years, I think, between Boston and Don't Look Back? Yeah. And, um, mm, man, you hear those chords, and it just, there's everything about it, you know? Yeah, it, yeah. It's just a, a fantastic song. The, the, the lyrics are extremely inspirational. Uh, very well produced, very well. I, can't, I, I sound like a broken back. Very well produced, very well, very well arranged. But see, you're um, you're a um, musician, and you're always in the studio creating music. So, like, I bet you pay a lot more attention to um, stuff like that than, than you know your average music fan like me. That um, I'm not a musician, so when I listen to this stuff, I'm just kind of listening with my ears. Like, you know, does this rock my world? Am I getting off on this you know guitar riff or whatever? Um, whereas you, 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 you're you listening really as a musician. you got much more of a musical ear than probably the average Joe does, you know? Well, I, I don't know about that, man. I mean, yeah. yes and no. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, there's some, I, I'd say there's some credence to that because, yeah. you know, as musicians, uh, you know, we are going to listen to right. things. We're like, wow, I really like what they did there. But for the most part, we're all just human beings, man. The first time we hear something, it either hits us or it doesn't. Yeah. And it just seems like... You know, it seems like you can just put on a Boston record, put it on, you know, and if you're, you know, we're going to go with 70s terminology here, you could drop the needle on song one, side one, and play it all the way through, and you're not going to skip anything. You're not going to be like, I don't, I, I don't need to move anything forward. You oh, know, oh, yeah. I'm going to listen to, and I'm going to listen to and enjoy oh, every yeah. last freaking song on this album, because there's nothing to skip. There's, there is no filler on a Boston record. I dare you to find it. Yeah, I, I'd fight I, anybody. I'd fight anybody who tells me it's there. Yeah, I, I dare, I, I dare, uh, I dare say that too. But you know, um, as a musician and a guy that um, you know p- puts together your own albums, I mean, um, have you ever noticed that sometimes like our ears kind of play tricks on you? For example, I did a show with this guy recently about talking about like our favorite TV uh, TV show themes, and um, mm-hmm. for example, until I was doing the research for a show, I never realized, and then I said, well, how did I miss that? Like, for example, take a show like um, The Brady Bunch. Okay, in the first season, um, they, they, had, they had different people performing the song, and, and there's a, the lyric is like, um, that's how they became The Brady Bunch, and then they had the kids kind of re-record the song, and it's, that's how we became The Brady Bunch. And, and my point right. is, um, you know, unless you're really paying attention, you're like, when you're watching these TV shows, for example... You're not even aware of it. It's different people singing it. You're not even aware of it. A lyric has been changed. But then, if you take the time, maybe sometimes you can pick up on this stuff. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Speaking of, um, I don't know, theme songs yeah. for me. Yeah. Sorry, it's instrumental. Uh-huh. But Mr. Qu- Mr. Quincy Jones, thank you for the Sanford and Son theme song. Oh yeah, that, that, that's that's still my favorite of all time. It was actually my ringtone at one point. Yeah, yeah, that I. Song's just yeah. great. It's funny, I had a friend that he had the same um, ringtone. I mean, um, yeah, and I think what what makes that such a great theme song doesn't even have any words, but the the instrumental music, it sticks in your head. Oh, yeah, totally. And it's like, you know, and that happens with great bands, but it's like, the, you can still see, like, what, uh, you know, where the song goes, da 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 yeah. You can almost see Demond. You can see Demond. I mean, I can just, I can just picture, the yeah, the credits roll in the beginning of a show as, as, you're, <laughs> as you're talking about it, and I just start rocking out to the theme. I mean, it doesn't even have any yeah, words. Exactly. And, and that, that is not just TV shows, but songs. I mean, oh, yeah. that, that is the, the test of a true great song. I mean, if, can it get into your head? And, and that's another thing about talking about these Boston songs. All these songs on this list that you've um, put together. They all stick in your head. Yeah. That's that's why we're talking about them, you know? They're, they're all in your head. Yeah, and yeah. Number two, number two, I guarantee, is the first Boston song everybody ever heard. And that's more than a feeling. Oh, yeah, yeah, no doubt. And I got to tell you, I mean, it's like, the, I, the funny thing is, is you know, we're talking about this, you know, we're talking about Boston songs today. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I was, 
I, I was inspired, man. I was sitting in my studio. I picked up my acoustic and I started playing more than a feeling on acoustic. And it was just, uh, it was it was surreal, man. Uh, because again, it music like this transports you back in time. Yeah. I it's like the second you hear this song, I'm in I'm in the passenger seat of my mother, my mother's 1970 Monte Carlo, and we're just. And, and um, like, like when you when you try to learn how to play the song and um, try to replicate it, how, how do you think you did? Oh, um, well, I, there's no way I'm going to be able to play it like these guys. I mean, no, but but you still get kind of get off on it. And, and I got to tell you, like I, I said, I love "Peace of Mind." That's probably my all-time favorite um, Boston tune. Probably the, the number two would be "More Than a Feeling." And the, I still mm-hmm. got a lot of love for "More Than a Feeling." I'll tell you why because that is probably the one song besides. Um, peace of mind that you hear constantly on the radio even today all these years later and i tell you oh yeah um very much like you know kind of like smoke on the water i never get tired of hearing the song i mean i mean um i could hear that song till the day i die and i never get and tired you, of it i don't know the riff just sticks in my head the melody and you'd be cool with it yeah yeah i gotta tell you yeah of all the songs on this list when i went to see there's a there's a uh, tribute band a Boston tribute band they're wow. called Don't Look Back. Great. Yeah. Um, I think the, uh, the the guitar player that's kind of like I guess the musical director. I think his name is Sal Cartagini. Okay. You might you might know the lead singer. His name's Roy Cathy. Oh yeah yeah and okay I, yeah yeah wow yeah. I, I got yeah Steel City Zone. Yeah yeah. But um, I gotta tell you, to watch Roy Cathy stand in front of an audience of. of of a few thousand people and hit Brad Delp live note yeah. for note has to be one of the most surreal things I've ever seen in my life. That dude, I, I, I man, that, <laughs> that, that dude can sing. Yeah. And it, it was just so amazing to, to watch him transport a crowd full of people back to their youth. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it was just amazing to see, to see that happen. The only thing that could, you know, the, would possibly rival that would be people sitting in an actual Boston concert doing it. Yeah. It was just amazing to see Roy do that, and it's uh, it's an amazing song, dude. Yeah, uh, like I said, brings you back to being eight years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, um, you know, you, um, your, your top your top choice here is um, pretty good one too. I gotta say. Um, yeah, this song for uh, whatever reason, man, it just this is the song when I heard it, just truly just became a part of me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, of course, a lot of people will bypass the intro when they listen to it because the intro is long and, uh, you know, it, it, but there's, uh, you know, there's so many like little nuances like right at the end of it, like yeah. all those little weird sounds that, you know, I don't know, I, I don't know what you would call it, but it's actually just Shoals doing like some delayed and chorus effect with his, uh, with his guitar pick on the strings, which honestly I, I can't do. Yeah, I, I always used to think it was almost two songs, you know, foreplay and long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And um, great tune, though. I, I, I got to say, your, your top four um, songs here, like you said, I don't think anybody could go wrong with. Um, this is a great list, like, from top to bottom. And, and I got to tell you, when you sent me the list initially, um, probably my first response was, man, man, I'm glad he, he's got I Need Your Love on here. That's that's a tune, like I said, I, I from the minute yeah. I heard it, I... That that song doesn't get too much love. I mean, it was a big hit for the band and stuff. But um, you know, I, I see it all the time, like on YouTube and stuff. But like I said, um, I wish it would have been a much bigger hit. But I thought, man, somebody's given this song some love besides me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The foreplay, the foreplay, long time song, man. Yeah. I gotta tell you, every time that that solo, you know, like the, the, just that that yeah. that bent note at the beginning of that solo, I'm telling you, every single time from that point of the song to you know, where Brad Delp comes back in and he's like, it's been such a long time. Yeah, right yeah. after the solo. Yeah. And it has like that just heavy power chord. It grips my heart and doesn't let go yeah. every yeah. single time. Yeah, and I think, you know, your top four songs are perfect because, um, and I think that's probably your immediate reaction because those are probably the songs that you've heard the most on the radio throughout your life. Like, same same with me. And, um, and I got to say before we wrap it up, Mike, um, another great show um i i do have to say you know like boston's never like officially broke up but i i think it's i'd be very surprised if the band ever um got back together because i i just um i think even tom Scholz knows um it's very hard i think be very hard to carry on uh, um without brad delp just you know 
the way you know he the fact that he's no longer with us is very tragic the way he went out yeah 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 that his his vocal legacy is very hard to follow yeah yeah michael sweet was but, the uh, one guy that tried and i i, I don't know that who else could do it <laughs> well i think i just mentioned it <laughs> yeah 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 Oh, and, and but, then uh, I, yeah. I, I, I almost forgot. Um, I, I do remember they also, before Michael Sweet uh, joined the band, um, they had this guy. Um, he, he was like in a, uh, some kind of tribute band. They got him. He used to work at Home Depot. So uh -huh. he should he should um, get his little uh, uh, mention there. Um, pretty amazing. Hey, why not? Yeah, but, but I, I, yeah. I, I do think this was a great um, show today. Is there anything else you'd like to say to the folks before we wrap this up? Uh, you know, as always, man, I just want to thank the people for tuning in because I think it's really cool that, you know, people actually take a listen to, you know, us chatting about Boston or us chatting about Fog Hat. That's pretty awesome. Um, I'd like to invite everybody to take a listen to Steel City if they haven't, you know, uh, swing by, you know, your favorite streaming mm -hmm. service, whether it's Amazon Music or Spotify or whatever, and just, you know, punch up Steel City, Mach 2, and give us a spin. See, see if you dig us. I think you might find some. You might find some Boston influence in there. I'll yeah. even include a song on this playlist that actually was truly inspired by Boston. Yeah, so. and, and, and you know, uh, Mike, um, I, I got to say too that um, you know Boston's one of those bands. I, I think um, you know any any uh, American rock fans gonna um, just one of those bands we we all love. But sometimes a lot of people have probably even forgotten about Boston. So that's part of the reason I want to do a show, kind of remind people about this great band that I know that you and I grew up on, and and um, I love them so much yeah. that. I kind of want to shine a light on um, their great catalog of music. Yeah, uh, I agree. How about we do something a little bit different next month, though? We won't go back to a classic '70s band. We'll figure something out differently. For next yeah, month. I'll let you. I'll let you kind of think of, uh, of something, and then just to let the folks know, um, we're, we're recording this tonight for um, our October episode, and we're going to post it about a week from now. So I will post it on um, the Chaotic Rifts um, Exposed. Um, Facebook page to let people know when it's going to go up, but it'll be about a week from now. Um, and Mike, if you want to post any of your music or anything on the page to let people know more about what you do, um, please feel free to do so. Oh, excellent, man. Thank you so much. Okay, take care.